the director here at Hacker Dojo. Uh, thanks for coming out today and participating with our members meeting. We have a lot of exciting news to go over, so we'll be kind of going through this pretty quick. Um, if you have any questions along the way, please raise your hand. Um, I'm very much a let's talk about questions type, so if there's anything you want to cover that we don't, um, or want us to expand on anything, please just let me know. I'm happy to dig into the details um, of anything that we're going over today. Um, we'll start off going over current financials, um, summary of membership, and then we'll be talking about what has been really the elephant in the room for the last couple of months, um, our plans for expansion uh, here at Hacker Dojo. So let's get to it. Um, so quick profit and loss for um, August. Like previous months, we are running, when we don't have events and other programs going on, um, about a total $7,000 a month net loss as an organization. That's been fairly consistent over the last few months. Um, we have periodic good months where we have event um, revenue and classes and things like that going on that build up our revenue. And then like August, we have slower months um, where we didn't really bring in a lot of revenue from events and things like that um, that are a little bit um, on the short side. One of the things, one of the challenges that we've really identified is for our growth and expansion, we are very limited here in this space. Whenever we have big events, we have to kick all the members out of the workspace. Um, whenever someone comes in and asks if we have any dedicated desk or have desks available, I'm like, yeah, we haven't had one of those available really for more than a day in the last year. Um, so we have been very, very constrained in our ability to really grow and expand what we're doing. And that's a big financial challenge. Um, we've had some big wins this year. Um, we've had some great donors along the way. Um, we've had some great programs that we are running with Summit Public Charter School. Um, so this number will be coming up um, in the coming months. Um, but more importantly, what we've identified as an organization is expansion really is the pathway forward. We'll talk a little bit about why that is, um, particularly when we're still running a little bit of a net deficit each month um, from kind of our just baseline operations. That is primarily like your membership, um, donations from events, um, revenue from um, kind of all the smaller things we do. And starting, um, restarting again next month, we'll have revenue coming in from the Summit Public Charter School. That's about a net four or $5,000 a month increase as well. So we'll be getting a lot closer to break even on a month over month basis with that program resuming. Um, so um, our cash in the month uh, for last month was 43,000. Um, during that month, we also acquired uh, 39 new sit-stand desks. This was um, a decision that we made when we had thought that we had a lease ready to sign for next door. Um, the day after we won all these at auction, we found out that that lease had been pulled, um, or that option had been pulled. We'll talk about um, the current lease um, that we are um, going to be moving towards um, very shortly. Um, we had a couple of um, high school events, our uh, high school hackathon that we expected to bring in some revenue also that we had spent some time on. That event unfortunately fell through, just wasn't a good fit with uh, the impact on the community and the needs of the, uh, the hackathon event. Um, so in August, our revenue from events was down. Um, while this was also, we were focusing on um, our financial plans, and um, part of that was we held off on invoicing a couple of larger events that we have planned um, because we didn't know if we would have enough space to accommodate them. So um, this month and next month, we expect to be pretty strong on the event front um, as some of those invoices go in um, and as we're able to lock in some of those events that we have coming up. Any questions on this? All right, anything online? Okay. Um, so um, for membership, um, the graph is not yet as useful as we'd like it to be. It only has two months of data in it so far um, for July and August, but we are working on a better way to break out our individual membership level um, growth. Um, as you'll notice, the top and the bottom lines have stayed very, very consistent. Those are our dedicated desks, um, and, um, and on the bottom are student memberships. 
Gym memberships do fluctuate a fair amount, but our dedicated desks, we have a finite number of those. Um, it's about 26 in total. Um, that's all that we have. And so that number has not significantly changed um, over really the last almost year now. Um, with a couple of, you're able to squeeze one or, more, one or two more desks in here and there. Um, as we'll talk about in the expansion plans, uh, a big part of the expansion is adding about 30 additional seats for dedicated desks. So that's a really big um, revenue driver for us as an organization. Um, our membership has stayed relatively flat over the last month or so. We had good growth in um, June and July, um, which is, this is our actual membership growth chart. Um, some of that was we're bringing on a couple of new volunteers, um, but we did see a lot of um, influx of new memberships earlier in the summer. Towards the end of the summer, we lose a lot of our student memberships, so people who are traveling or moving. Um, seems to be that we have a little bit of a flattening off or dip in September. Um, so that wasn't unexpected that August numbers were pretty flat. Um, we did also run into a couple problems with how um, Nexus was working. And this was a pretty major challenge that ended up losing us a couple of members where we had a few days where Nexus was not um, properly transmitting the information to apps like Kissy and our Iron Wi-Fi. Um, and the frustration, you know, we were frustrated, members were frustrated that they weren't able to log into um, those accounts after they joined as new members. Um, and we lost a couple of members because of that. That problem, we believe we've identified the issue, seems to be working fine now. Um, but it's often a little challenges like that where you might have three or four members who have really frustrating experiences coming in um, and aren't able to be easily onboarded um, and take advantage of the space um, that can impact particularly with, you know, in a given month, we're happy if we gain eight, nine members. Um, that's kind of like our projected growth rate. So if three or four of those lose them due to just a technical glitch, um, it can impact, you know, have an impact long term pretty quickly. Um, so that definitely was something, a challenge that we faced. We are looking into alternatives to Nexodus um, to make that integration and introducing new members a little bit more seamless, um, as well as improve the member experience for everyone here. Um, reserving rooms for like um, Kamensky and Brooklyn is not as easy as we'd like it to be. Um, and so we're looking for options to improve that process and make your experience as members a little bit more seamless, a little bit easier, um, and just make the space easier to access when you join us. Uh, we also did a uh, marketing test run uh, last month um, with Yelp, and ultimately what we decided is most of the people who are looking for co-working spaces on Yelp are looking for dedicated desks. And since we didn't have any of those to offer, uh, we stopped that um, marketing test because we just didn't have the product ready that they were mostly looking for that would have actually given us a return for that money. So once we um, have the adjacent space and the new desks, we'll be returning to a couple of those marketing options that bring in people who are looking for dedicated workspaces. Any questions on this? Yeah. Regarding uh, conference room uh, reservations, I know we used to have like, a, like an iPad outside Kaminsky I don't think we ever have them for Brooklyn, but um, that one went away. I'm not sure uh, what happened to that, or if, would that be an option for conference rooms in the future? Yeah, great question. Uh, the question was, um, we used to have an iPad for reserving Kaminsky in Brooklyn. Um, the interface at the time was pretty frustrating um, for, and not as intuitive as, as we liked. Um, I did spend some time last week talking with Nexus about um, improving their um, portal that they use for that. Um, Nexus has been pretty responsive in making improvements. Um, so we are going to be retesting the um, apps or the um, their um, app and going back to that um, in the next couple of weeks, particularly as we expand into the adjacent space. All of those conferences will have some sort of tablet on the door so that you can make a reservation. We're trying to make it as easy as possible um, so that you don't have to like log in all of your information, but can walk up, have some identifier um, where you can just essentially badge in make a reservation, use the room, um, and things like that. So yes, we're definitely looking at that and wanting to get back to that. And that's the type of ease of use that we're really keenly interested in returning to. Any other questions? All right. 
Um, so some updates. Um, we are in the final rounds of hiring a um, new membership coordinator. This person will be really responsible for day-to-day -day supporting members. If you have um, you know, problems, questions, difficulty getting Wi-Fi access, um, or interpersonal difficulties, or want to see um, specific classes or workshops offered, this is the person that's really gonna make um, your day-to-day -day life here um, even better. And it will be really focused on improving the member experience um, you know, really across the board, as well as doing additional outreach at local events um, and supporting our membership growth through going to like local farmers markets, tech events, things like that to get um, word about Hacker Dojo uh, back out into the community. So uh, we have a number of candidates that we've interviewed through this process. We started with 100 applicants um, and we're down to, I think, the final four. Um, so that um, position should be filled in the next couple of weeks. Um, and we're really looking forward to having you know, an additional person to help support um, the community here and really you know, take in a lot of the great feedback that we've received um, and put that into action from improving community um, and making you know, the space a little bit more vibrant and alive, um, facilitating you know, events that are member oriented and support individual um, goals, whether you're an entrepreneur or looking for a new job. Um, we want to be make sure that we're supporting all of our members on really a day-to-day -day basis and helping them achieve their goals as well. Um, as I mentioned before, we're working on finalizing a couple of big events. Um, the big one that we've been uh, that we had to put on hold while we were going through the lease negotiations was a conference with Bike Dance um, for November. Um, I want to also real quick cover one point that was brought up. That's a really great point. Um, because of security concerns with ByteDance. ByteDance will not be touching any of our network equipment um, for security reasons. Um, we don't let anyone other than Hacker Dojo um, work with like our network. So any concerns that you have with like security, um, particularly with how much there's been in the news recently, um, please do come to us and let us know. We take those uh, questions very, very seriously and want to make sure that all of your information, your data, everything like that is fully secure. Um, particularly when you're here at Hacker Dojo. Um, so that was a concern that was raised um, that we want to you know, address in a very open way because um, it is you know, a warranted concern given the news of the last few years. Um, this, is, um, this is a really big event for us. They're expecting between 150 and 200 people. Um, so we don't have room on this side of the building to facilitate that size of an event. Um, so we were really on hold for this until we knew that we had forward progress um, adjacent. Um, we're going to be also host, oh yes. Eric, when you say that uh, our network is going to be secure, I, I assume you mean the member network. Correct, because yes. so-called Hacker Dojo Free is probably, probably open to bike dance and everybody else, right? We will be setting up a specific SSID for, um, for that event. Um, and it'll be going through our normal security protocols um, through you know, all the uh, encryption and um, Fortinet and everything that we currently have. So they won't be on the guest. This has actually been one of the feedback that we've gotten from events um, is the guest network kind of drags to a stop as soon as we get over about 40 or 50 people. Um, so one of the things that we're looking at um, in this in our expansion plans is how to really make sure that we have the hardware in place to support 150 or 200 concurrent users, um, both on a free network or on a specific uh, network. You know, much the way that we set up um, a hackathon event, a ha hackathon network. Whenever we have those events, we'll be doing a similar um, setup for bike dance and any other big events that we have. Any other questions? All right. Um, we are hosting the Mountain View Chamber of Commerce um, Mixer on October 10th, I believe is the date. Um, that's a Thursday evening. Uh, tickets, um, I believe, are $20, $20 or $25. Um, if you're not a member of the Mountain View Chamber of Commerce, it's a great organization. They do a lot of promotion of local businesses, companies, um, have great events for networking. Um, so we are going to be hosting their next kind of networking um, mixer. Um, so we'll be sharing out details and event invites for that. We just confirmed that. Um, so that'll be coming out in the next couple of days. Um, 
there will be wine and beer and cheese and um, sodas and things like that. Um, but it will be one of our ticketed events. Um, so um, Hacker Dojo members will be getting a discount on the ticket. I don't know exactly what that is. I think it's the same as the Chamber of Commerce rate. So it'd be, I think, $20 um, per person for that. Um, we're also hosting a, um, we're calling it a hackathon, but it's really more of an idea-thon. It's a four hour long event for local college students um, on October 12th, or um, sorry, that's October 11th, um, not the 12th, um, with Red Bull. So this is actually a really exciting event. Um, Zyla Foxland, who's a YouTube, one of my favorite YouTube content creators, um, she's a uh, tech-related maker based out of Southern California. She's going to be up here as our keynote speaker. There will be a meet and greet and Q&A session for Hacker Dojo members um, prior to this event. It'll be right around 4.35 o'clock. Um, but this will be a really, really fun event. It is primarily aimed at um, college students, but we aren't going to necessarily turn away uh, Hacker Dojo members who want to participate in this. Um, we just, you know, the primary audience for this um, event that Red Bull is sponsoring is going to be Stanford, um, Santa Clara University, and San Jose State University uh, students. So they'll be bringing um, a really diverse crowd of students from all three of those colleges to participate with this. Um, paired with this, Red Bull has a really fun program called Red Bull Basement. If you have a great idea to change the world, um, this is an area, a uh, way that you can submit that idea and actually get that potentially funded. They have a series of kind of pitches that you go through. Um, so if you think they have a great idea or want to come and help come up with some great ideas to change the world for the better, um, this is a cool event to do that. We'll have some follow-on events that are um, a little bit more all ages oriented um, as well. Um, and then we're also uh, finalizing a fun hardware project with the 1517 fund. Um, so you who have been around Hacker Dojo for a long time may remember 1517 from pre-pandemic. Um, used to host events with Hacker Dojo, so we're happy that we're going to be working with them again. Um, they are a uh, VC fund um, in line with the Thiel Fellowship, if you're familiar with that. Um, they primarily target um, founders who are taking non-traditional routes. So um, college dropouts, people who have gone through alternative education pathways, um, and our founding idea, founding companies and coming up with new ideas. That's their primary target. Um, really, really interesting group um, and uh, really great organization. So looking forward to building that partnership. Um, and then a couple of meetings back, we talked about our community standards and expectations um, poster and guide, guidelines that we are gonna be rolling out. Those just came back from the printer. So I'll be picking those up um, hopefully this afternoon. Um, and we'll be posting those around uh, this is an effort that has been underway for um, a number of months now with a lot of really diverse um, involvement. Um, and I really want to um, have some appreciation for Emily, our board president, who has really taken leadership on getting these standards and expectations um, put together in a way that is really clear and engaging uh, that we hope will make the Hacker Dojo community a lot better. Um, and that's not that to say that things are bad now, um, but there's a lot of things that people in the tech world um, in general um, tend to um, sometimes struggle with interpersonal communication styles. Uh, we are a very, very diverse set of people uh, from a lot of different backgrounds. And a lot of people have different expectations about what talking with someone or engaging in conversation might look like expectations about what they'll find in a space like this. And so this is a um, really a first step for us laying out some really clear guidelines of how you should engage with other members and guests here at Hacker Dojo um, from topics like just personal hygiene to um, you know, things that could be construed as sexual harassment um, and you know, a lot of areas that can make a tech community Feel and welcome to specific people who are engaging with it. And so this is an effort to really um, set a level playing field that everyone knows what the expectations are and how they are expected to treat each other um, and what topics um, shouldn't be talked about here um, because they make other people actively uncomfortable and can drive away members and guests. 
Um, and so this has been a huge, huge process trying to get this down into something that is digestible without having pages and pages and pages of guidelines. Uh, so we're really excited uh, that we'll have that up uh, very, very shortly. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions as that gets rolled out, please do let us know. We've shared the graphic, the primary graphics for that a couple times, but we'll also be um, putting out some additional information as well. Um, and again, this is a it's, you know really an effort to make the space more welcoming, um, the space more engaging, and really set some guidelines and boundaries um, that make it easier for people to engage in a more free manner, knowing that there are guide rails in place of this is what I can expect when I come to Hacker Jojo, um, and this is how I can expect to be treated when I'm here. Any questions about that? All right. And also a big thank you to all the volunteers who engaged with that. We had feedback from um, a lot of different members along, along the way, and we really appreciate the time um, and often the vulnerability that took to talk about uncomfortable situations that have happened in the past or ways that um, the community in the past may not have been as welcoming or inclusive as we want it to be. Um, so hopefully this will move us forward as a community and really make this a, um, a much better space. All right, the big topic. Um, we have a lease amendment to our current lease ready to sign. Um, this has been a, um, for those that don't know, the adjacent 10,000 square feet um, has been vacant for about a year and a half. We've been in negotiations with the um, owner and the landlord for um, the last few months. We thought that we had a deal ready to go. They pulled out of it because one of the ownership group um, balked at the terms of the deal. Um, so we started looking in other directions and they came back with an offer that was not great, um, but we were able to negotiate to something that we feel is a really, really good point for us to move forward on, um, and now have agreement from all parties that this is acceptable to everyone. Um, the basic terms of the agreement are the adjacent 9,579 square feet at a dollar a square foot. Um, that will increase by 3% um, each year over the next 28 months we have it, so not a huge increase. Um, we are getting three months for that space, rent abatement, so that's effectively rent free. Um, we still have to pay our um, all the CAM costs, community, community area maintenance, that's electricity, um, maintenance of the parking lot, things like that. Um, but essentially we aren't going to be paying those first three months of the base rent. Um, and a 28 month lease term, so this ends concurrent with our current lease here. The other um, point that we were able to negotiate out was our lease had um, a six month termination clause built into it that the ownership could say at any point, you have six months to leave and that would be essentially an early termination of the lease that we had no recourse on. We were able to get that removed. Um, and that's a really big point of stability for us as an organization, particularly with knowing that the ownership group would like to sell this property um, so essentially, as soon as they had found a buyer, they would have said, yep, six months, off you go. Um, and we would have left Hacker Dojo in a really uncomfortable position of having to locate a new facility, move into it, uh, move out of here and move into it within a six month time span to provide continuity. So this is a really big, you know, was a really unstable point um, that we were able to also negotiate out. Um, we had a board meeting last night to um, review and approve this lease amendment, and we are approved to move forward with this. Um, this is not yet signed. Um, we are going to be looking at one additional property tomorrow morning, um, and then having a, such a, we're going to, that property is really, really interesting, um, then we'll consider it, but we anticipate at this point that we'll be signing this tomorrow. Um, and most importantly, this expansion, um, we want to do, have to do, and are really doing this with all of you. We want your feedback. We want your help and support along the way. We want you to come and have a fantastic and fun time with the new things that we're going to be adding in. Um, and we're going to start that off with a community meeting. We are going to schedule the official date and time as soon as we have a signed lease and know when that will happen. Um, but tentatively targeting October 1st, 
that will be a tour of the adjacent space and a meeting to talk about how that space is going to take shape. We have pretty comprehensive plans um, drawn up already for how each area we envision it being utilized, but that is not set in stone. We have a lot of room to change and pivot and adjust course based on feedback from the community and based on the needs of the organization. So we think we have a workable plan, but we want your feedback on that and your involvement in uh, shaping and adjusting that and refining that further. Um, we're gonna need a lot of volunteer help along the way for this to happen. Um, so if you are interested and willing in leading volunteer tasks, so this might be getting one of the rooms painted. And so you would be responsible for organizing volunteers um, and working alongside Tiana and myself um, and other volunteers to get that task done. If you're willing to take on a little bit of a leadership role on individual tasks along the way, please let us know. Uh, this is one of the areas that we're gonna really need the community's involvement. There's a lot of work to be done um, to bring this space online. Um, and it's a lot more than uh, just Tiana and myself and the board members can handle. Um, so we really hope that you'll be involved in this um, and hopefully excited about all the opportunities that this is going to provide to us as an organization. The primary organizing for that will be through the Slack channel, uh, the volunteering channel uh, specifically. So if you haven't already joined Slack, please do so. Um, if you need a direct invite, if you um, need one of those, uh, come and talk with me after this meeting and I will get your email added in. You can also talk with Tiana, she should be able to add you as well. Um, so, volunteers have been great. Um, you know, we've accomplished um, a lot of really great improvements in here already. Um, and we have a really interesting kind of blank slate next door that we get to do a lot of fun things with. Um, so we hope that um, as this moves forward, you're ex as excited as we are about the possibilities here um, and can join us in that. Any questions on this? All right. So we do have some critical needs um, along the way. Fundraising is probably the biggest one right now. The primary difference between the prior lease and this lease is the prior lease that we had targeted included free rent for this side of the building as well. Um, and that's about a $30,000 difference um, between the terms of the prior lease that we were looking at um, and this one now. We had before targeted about $20,000 that we needed to raise as an organization. With the new lease terms, that number is likely closer to 50,000. We don't have to have that all raised today. The good news is that isn't a by end of day raise that's over the next couple of months. Um, we do have a couple of immediate targets that we want to hit. Um, and we are looking at a couple of different options from line of credits um, to loans to get us out the door and moving as quickly as we can. Uh, volunteer organization. As I mentioned on the previous slide, this is a really critical need. If you're willing to take some leadership um, on some of these tasks and help coordinate with your fellow members and friends and guests and whoever else wants to come over and get a little bit dirty and paint on their clothes, uh, we'd love to have you. Um, there's a lot to do from cleaning, repainting, mounting new screens on the walls, uh, to putting up um, different types of artwork or building planters so that we have some live plants inside the building and it's a little bit less sterile and the air quality is better and a little bit more enjoyable. Um, we can use all types of different people um, for all types of different tasks. So um, again, we'd love to have you. Um, we also um, have a design committee we're putting together um, to develop ideas for the decor of the space, make it as engaging and exciting and interesting as this side is. Um, right now, like I said before, it's a pretty blank slate and we want to make it fun and interesting, have different themed rooms, um, but keeping with the culture of Hacker Dojo and um, the non-traditional interior decor that we have, uh, we're really excited about what options we have um, over there. Um, and then obviously build out assistance. Um, we have um, some work that needs to be done from electrical outlets for TV screens, um, installing um, runs of wire for um, the Wi-Fi access points, um, improving the exterior lighting. We know that that's been a big consideration for a lot of people.
must be somebody's unmuting. Uh, can you mute everyone on Tiana? You can't. Why don't you just mute your laptop? Maybe it's me. <clears throat> it was probably me. Um, so improvements to things like exterior lighting. We you know, have gotten some feedback that it's a little bit dark in the parking lot um, in the evenings, and it definitely is. So that's one of the areas that we want to uh, put up some improved lighting fixtures out there. Um, again, trying to make the space a little bit more welcoming, a little bit safer, um, and really just you know, um, trying to make it the best that we can um, over you know, this expansion and far into the future. All right, so here's our next steps. The most critical next step that we have is we have a $9,579 deposit that we have to put down before we can move in. This is our first fundraising goal. Uh, we are trying to hit this by the end of the week. The good news is one of our board members has already chipped in $5,000. We are halfway there. Um, but we do need to, by the end of the week, to be able to sign this lease to raise the additional um, funds for this. We do have cash reserves in the bank, but what we are trying to avoid do is spending down our cash reserves in case anything goes wrong. Um, we wanna make sure that we are in a secure financial position, so we are trying to fundraise along the way to cover the expansion costs that we are going to be incurring. Um, this is a QR code if you um, want to donate. Every dollar helps, and I mean that quite literally. Every time someone donates a dollar, um, it increases the traffic to our page. Um, it shows that there's a community supporting Hacker Dojo. It isn't just five or six big donors. Um, every single person who puts their name as a donor alongside mine and alongside our board members and alongside the community members who have already donated, every single person adds one more name to the number of people that care about Hacker Dojo that are willing to put even a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, a thousand dollars, whatever it may be put that money towards um, our expansion. Um, we are trying to hit that milestone by the end of the week. Um, so if you are able to, uh, this is a great time to donate. The sooner that we get the, we, um, get the deposit secured, the sooner we can sign and officially start moving in. Uh, we can't actually make any money off of that space um, for the first, next six days until October 1st. Um, but we can start going in there and vacuuming the floors and um, renting industrial cleaners that we can do a pre-clean of everything. We can start making those type of improvements pretty much as soon as we put the deposit down. The second big milestone will be our network build out. Um, we all know how terrible it is when the internet goes down. Um, so this is going to be one of the first things that we are focusing on and really making sure that we have time to stress test this and make sure that we have complete coverage, really good signal strength, high speed throughout. We are also working on building in some additional redundancy um, into our network. Right now, we don't have a lot of redundancy, um, so we are working on improving uh, that as well. Uh, we're um, currently budgeting about $10,000 for the network build out, um, and that we want to be done with by the beginning of the third week of October, so about three weeks from now. We hope that the network loop will be up and running so that we can start testing it, debugging it, moving things around if we need to, and really have a good solid picture of um, how that's going to operate. We're also targeting a relatively aggressive time frame for that because that's one of ByteDance's really critical asks is they don't want all their conference attendees to be working on really slow internet. Uh, so as part of our contract with them, we are going to be doing an early stress test of our internet to make sure that it can handle 150 concurrent users. So we want to make sure that we have time to prepare for that so that we can look um, and really you know, be prepared for hosting a conference of that size. Um, if you have network build out experience, would also love to talk with you. We have a couple of um, volunteers who have already contributed a lot. Um, particularly at this point, if you have direct experience recently with Cisco Meraki, uh, we are considering um, some changes to our overall network structure and would love to talk with you about your experiences um, if you have recent experience with that. The third big milestone that we're going to try and hit by the end of October are really all of the other nice-to-haves and some critical need-to-haves in the space. And this is audiovisual equipment, speakers in the space, um, setting up microphones, you know, replicating the setup that we have here so that we can also host events on that side. 
Um, decor, new plants. Planter boxes are really expensive, it turns out, um, for when you want them to survive indoors and not flood water everywhere. Um, so there's a lot of different things, a lot of different little things and some big things that um, we are going to be spending money on. Um, and we're targeting, um, anticipating about $20,000 total for that. Um, and that should get us in a really good position to have most of the space um, ready to occupy at the end of um, October. Um, and then beyond that, we know that there's going to be a lot of expenses along the way that we don't necessarily anticipate. We're going to tear up the carpet in one room and realize we need to do a much deeper clean than it than was needed. That might cost a thousand dollars. So we're um, projecting about ten thousand dollars of miscellaneous expenses that we don't know about right now. Um, and we do know that the AC works. We do know that the plumbing works. Both of those are in good shape. Um, so. Those are usually the most expensive repairs moving into a place. Um, everything else looks pretty good. So, but we do anticipate that there will be things that happen that are unexpected and we want to make sure that we have enough room in our budget to deal with those when they come up. Any questions about this? This is also a really good opportunity for you um, on this page and some of the other ones we'll be sharing. There are uh, links that you can share to your social media. If you know people, past members of Hacker Dojo, friends in the community, uh, tech founders who understand the value of spaces like ours, whoever it may be, if you have friends um, and family and networks that would be engaged with supporting a space like this, please do share this campaign um, to Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, wherever it may be. Uh, that visibility, the traffic to our space, really does help us tremendously. Uh, you don't always know, you know who you're talking to. Um, I was, as a great story, was at a wedding um, a year and a half ago, had a 15-minute conversation with a lawyer in San Francisco um, who happened to know about um, our organization. Um, and I posted and connected on LinkedIn, and I posted up that we were doing a fundraiser um, earlier this year. And that person donated $1,500 just because they knew Hacker Dojo and we had a very brief conversation about it. They saw that post. I wasn't targeting them specifically. It wasn't a specific ask. They were just working on my page as a friend, saw that post and made a really significant contribution to the organization. I'm not exaggerating at all when I say that your networks are incredibly valuable and really, really useful in supporting Hacker Dojo and supporting communities like ours. All right, so here's our timeline that we're current, again, this is dependent on us signing a lease um, sometime this week. Um, so if we don't do that, um, if we decide that we need a little bit more time to fundraise before we sign, this will get moved out accordingly. But at present, we are hoping to begin build out October 1st. Um, first, second, and third, we're gonna be um, planning to do a deep clean of the adjacent space. That's gonna be all the carpets, all of the flooring um, throughout the entire space. This is also an opportunity for us to identify, does the carpet need to get pulled out? Is it in bad enough shape in different areas that we need to replace it? That'll allow us to get on a problem like that very, very early. So we're gonna be um, doing that the first few days. Um, we are planning on having the additional dedicated desk or hive space, our, um, one of the primary areas um, in the space, um, available at the end of October. Um, so basically once the network is up and running, once we um, are starting to move things over there, that is really one of the first areas that we are going to be bringing on the line. Uh, we have gotten tons and tons of requests for additional um, decade desks that we just don't have room for. Um, and so this is an area that will be bringing in uh, revenue very, very early for us as an organization. Yeah. Uh, have you guys been capturing the lead list of people who want the dedicated desks? Yes, we have a lead list right now. Um, the unfortunate part with a lot of that lead list is it rolls over very, very quickly because when someone needs a desk, they usually need it now. And if we can't provide it, we lose that customer relatively quickly. Possibly, but if they're not in a signed contract somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. And that, so yeah. the, the one thing that I was kind of thinking about raising funds, you guys probably already considered this, but offering maybe 25% off if they pay for three or six months up front. Yeah, we are uh, we are looking at a couple of different options for um, how we can adjust pricing for longer term commitments, paying it up front. 
I want um, to get yeah. to, to reserve now, pay now. Yeah, absolutely. We just want to make sure that we know exactly what our offerings are first. Um, so um, as soon as we get into that room and get a finalized layout, um, Hacker Dojo members are going to get first shot at those. But when we open it up, we will be offering some discounts for longer term commitments um, because having that cash in hand helps us through these initial couple months that are going to be pretty tight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the um, So Decade uh, Desk High Space available at the end of October. Um, we are going to be currently planning on moving our maker facilities from this side to a room in the um, back of 857. We anticipate that that will be available in the middle of uh, November. That is designed to open up, in part, the laser room over here um, for additional uh, dedicated desk space as well. Uh, so we have some interested um, parties in that already. So we want to, again, get that space um, set up for them as early as we can, um, but improve, definitely have some improved maker facilities um, available sometime in the middle of November as, um, as time allows. Uh, we're anticipating towards the end of November for the computer lab uh, to be up and running. Um, these are um, anticipated to bring in some upper end systems for design work, um, 3D design, um, rendering, video editing, um, as well as having gaming stations available that guests and members will be able to essentially reserve a high end gaming system by the hour. Um, members will get a allotment of hours um, that they'll be able to work through before they're charged anything additional. Um, so they'll have access to that as well as part of their membership um, included in. But it should hopefully bring in a lot of additional people who are looking for you know, higher end gaming or video editing system and see the value in the membership because they don't have to pay hourly for, uh, for those services. Um, and then sometime uh, during October and November, most of our open co-working space, where we are right now, is going to be primarily moving over to 857. It's a larger space. Um, we'll be improving the desks, core management, and really keeping the space set up a little bit more permanently for um, co-working space. So we won't have the shuffle between events and co-working, events and co-working that we currently have. This space will be set up a little bit more directly for larger events. Um, so we'll be able to host a lot more um, like dedicated pitch nights, things like that, where we don't have to disrupt the entire space and everyone's workspace, um, and then put it back at the end of the night when we're all exhausted, it's you know, approaching midnight. Um, so it'll stay pretty much um, on this side, set up as more permanent event space. Um, and that'll make it a lot easier for all of our event coordinators to come in, know that they've got the space set up, D&D is ready to go, um, seating's already out, they don't have to you know, take on that extra task, should make um, hosting events and things like that just a lot more seamless um, on this side. We still do plan to use that side for really big events. So there will still be some periodic um, movement over there, um, particularly the Bike Dance Conference, we're anticipating um, up to 200 people for that. So that will be that side, and then a reception on this side in the evening. We'll be utilizing both spaces. Um, that event alone um, has the potential to pay most of our rent for that month. So we don't take on disruption. I said before, we don't take on disrupting the community lightly. Um, but when we have a big conference like that, when we can bring 200 new faces to Hacker Dojo and they can see who we are, um, and they're going to contribute a lot to our organization. Um, you know, we really find that a lot of value for that um, as an organization. Hacker Dojo members, of course, are invited um, to that conference, um, and we hope that you'll join us for that. Any questions on this timeline? Yeah. Are you knocking down a wall and connecting this, or are they separate? We are looking at how we're going to do that. Um, the only real wall that we could knock down, um, and we don't know if it's structural or not yet, is the one here in the lobby. Uh, we do anticipate having some sort of door or pass through there. Um, we haven't decided if it's going to be like a glazed glass door um, or glass pass through, um, or if it's non structural, if we want to bring it down entirely and have it be more, we can put up a barrier, a temporary wall if we need. Um, we are still figuring out kind of that balance between having easy access through, um, but also um, you know, ease of monitoring on our part to make sure that you know, we're able to make sure the entire space is you know, being monitored so it's safe and secure um, and we don't have you know, random people walking around that 
you know, haven't checked in, things like that. Um, so we are going to be changing how access works a little bit uh, through this. Um, so we're looking at a couple different systems that allow members to actively badge in when they come through the door. So you'll have either your Kissy app or Key Fob or something like that. You just tap as you come through the door, goes green, membership's current, great, off you go. Um, otherwise, you'll be need, you'll need to um, sign in at the front desk, uh, be positively ID'd, things like that. Um, so that's a way that we are going to be working on um, having a much larger facility that's harder for us to monitor all areas of it. We have to be conscious of security. Um, and so we're going to make sure that at the front door where guests are potentially coming in, we do have a access point there that we can positively identify everyone coming through the door, member or not member, um, and you know, address them um, accordingly where it's sign in, make sure you've signed a, a liability, waiver release, have ID, things like that. Yeah. Will you have some sort of a facility for returning guests so they don't have to go through the, the same procedure every time, every month they come, let's say, to attend um, the hackathon or uh, AIAA or something like that, you know, where they do it once, they release the, from liability, give all the particulars, and after that, can. Because when those big events happen, you have a line out the door sometimes. Yeah, yeah, great question. The um, question was, um, are we going to have capability for returning guests who are here on a regular basis for different events to easily badge in as well? Um, and the answer is, I sure hope so. Uh, we don't have that solution figured out yet, but it is something that we do want to include. Um, and that may be as easy as um, just storing the information that they can access it setting up a profile. Anyone can actually set up a profile in Nexodus. You don't have to be a member to have one. Um, so we are looking at what um, options we have for that, as well as looking at a couple of different platforms. Kissy has a guest management system. Nexodus has a guest management system. There's a number of different systems that we could implement for that, and we're still assessing which one will give us that capability um, among the other ones we're looking for. Eric, I have two questions. Um, one is, for the last four candidates, or is one of the interview questions um, basically asking them to design the fundraising plan for this? Like, is there a way to incorporate the fundraising plan with these candidates and to get ideas? Um, I try not to ask candidates to do work in the interview process for the most part. Um, the, the community manager actually is not going to be responsible for fundraising. That's my responsibility. Um, so no, we're not asking specifically about fundraising. They will be working um, in partnership with me for bringing in new members and lead generation as part of their um, core job. Um, and we've got a ton of really great ideas, um, but it's not a specific interview question that I'm asking because we weren't looking for fundraising experience with this position. Also, um, is there an event that can be held between now and October that would bring some funds, maybe even out of the box, like something that solves a greater solution problem like speed dating or uh, something like that? Uh, yeah, the question was, um, are there events we can hold, hold between now and October that are going to bring in funds that solve some of the larger like, Silicon Valley problems? Um, we have a lot of events, being completely honest, we have a lot of events um, between now and the end of October. Um, a lot of those are bringing in funds. Uh, we are planning a larger fundraiser um, at the end of the year. I think it's December 3rd. Tiana? It's the first Saturday in December. It's immediately following Giving Tuesday. So it's the Saturday following Giving Tuesday. Uh, we are planning a big um, cyberpunk casino night um, fundraiser here at Hacker Dojo. Um, so that will be kind of our big end of the year fundraiser in conjunction with Giving Tuesday. Um, would obviously love to do something earlier than that, um, but looking at our schedules, we were pretty, between build out and everything else going on, we were pretty slammed between now and November, so we actually pushed that event back a month um, because we just really wouldn't have the bandwidth to execute it in the way that we'd want to. Um, and given the reputation that Fire Festival and other really like catastrophic failures of events have um, gained, we want to make sure that we're doing it right. Um, so don't serve cheese sandwiches. Yeah, yeah don't, don't serve just cheese sandwiches and charge $400 for it. That's, that's a great way to annoy everyone. 
Um, but the um, Chamber of Commerce Mixer, we are going to be doing an appeal at that for um, the visitors there to donate and support Hacker Dojo. Um, the Red Bull event, um, the um, bike dance event, and the um, workshop with the um, 1317 Fund, all three of those are um, contributing to the build out and contributing to um, our expansion. Yes. Oh, I, was, I was just curious. So, um, that is going to add like a big unit expense every month, right? So, what is do you foresee like dedicated desk bringing in that much revenue or more? Like, what is the main push for the expansion? Great question. Um, yeah, so the question was that's going to obviously add a big monthly expense. Um, and how do we plan to you know account for that monthly expense? Um, I'm going to have an easy way of sharing this tab. Um, I'll give the numbers off the top of my head. Um, our current projection is that that space taken in isolation um, over the next 12 months will bring in net about $100,000 for us as an organization based on our dedicated desk space, um, based on locker rentals, um, the Maker Lab, um, Maker Bay rentals, um, and do you recall what else the core ones were? And um, event revenue. Event revenue is really the big, you know, right now we are having to turn away events because we don't have enough space for it. So event revenue is a really big driver. Getting that space at a dollar a square foot means that that actual cost is a lot lower than it would normally be. Um, this side we are paying currently about 235 a square foot. Um, so our rent, our monthly rent for this 6,000 square feet is actually lower than the adjacent 10,000 square feet. Um, so getting that much additional space means that we can have a huge number of additional desks, have much bigger events, have a computer lab, have a larger maker area, and support a lot of new organizations and things like that. Um, from basically month two or so. Um, our projections are that that side will be revenue generating for the organization as a whole. Um, that does go up and down. There's a couple of months where we, you know, for instance, aren't running youth programs. Um, so that we expect that that month will drop down a little bit more. Other months uh, when we are running a full slate of youth camps, you know, that side, having that side means that we net as an organization $30,000 or $40,000 in a single month. Uh, so there's so it opens up so many doors for us um, for additional revenue generation that right now are unfortunately just closed. Um, youth camps I mentioned um, over the course of the year is um, if we just run two youth camps, um, eight students each, and we do that during the summer and all primary um, school breaks. So like winter break, Thanksgiving break, spring break, Presidents Day week, um, all of those. If we do that for a year, uh, that is net about $150,000 just for two camps running concurrently. We don't have room for that here. Um, and so having the additional space means that, A, you don't have to deal face to face with 16 you know, kids um, on a day to day basis during the summer, which I love kids. They're fantastic, but that can get old when you're trying to work. Um, and so we had talked early on about doing youth programs here, and ultimately we just felt it would be too big of a disruption to the community. Um, if Even if they're in a room and being you know, relatively quiet, lunchtime happens, kids have energy, they're going to be out in the space. We wanted to make sure that we were balancing quality of life for members here as well as what generates revenue. And ultimately the quality of life impact was larger than the revenue benefit to the organization. Um, and so this gives us the option to do so much more with that. The decade desk space that we're adding in by itself covers about 80% of our additional rent. So that room alone, if we're able to fill those desks, it's um, between 24 and 30. If we're able to fill that, that by itself covers, um, I'd say about 80% of our monthly rent. Now there's a lot of other expenses for space. We have additional employees we'll be hiring. We have um, electricity costs. Um, we have our CAM, our community area maintenance costs, all those other things. So saying that like it covers base rent, that's part of a larger pie. 
Um, but um, we, in the last um, meeting, I think we shared um, out kind of financial plan for the space. I'm happy to sit down with anyone that wants to take a look through that um, and talk about how we've kind of allocated space um, with this expansion and what revenue we expect from that. Uh, we tried to keep our numbers relatively conservative. If the event space takes off and is doing great and we're getting a bike dance conference every month with that, um, we're super happy with that, but we're not planning for that currently. Um, those are you know, kind of our stretch goals and nice to haves and we'll be super, super happy as an organization if it happens, but we don't want to rely on that for the survival of our organization. Um, so this will give us a lot more steady revenue. Youth programs are incredibly steady revenue. If you get them published early, we have tons of kids in the area and they all want STEM camps. Um, so we know that that's revenue that we can really plan around and count on. Event revenue is much more capricious, I think is the best word for it. Depends entirely on current budgets. Uh, you know, right now, the, you know, economic conditions in uh, Silicon Valley are really, really tight. Um, so Google has cut back their event budget, Apple's cut back their event budget, all the like, big companies have cut their event budget in major ways. That revenue comes and goes. And so that's one of the areas that we didn't want to depend on that entirely. Um, but it's definitely something that we are looking at as this is an area we can overachieve against our budget and have some really big gains. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Uh, again, if you want to sit down with me and look through um, the financial projections, I'm more than happy to. Uh, we've included also the cash flow. Um, that cash flow um, for the expansion is really what's driving our overall number of like how much we need to raise in the next month, or, I mean, next month and a half, two months. Um, because we know for the most part when all those big bills are going to hit. Um, and we want to make sure that we have cash on hand to deal with those. Um, so, so that's really what's governing that forty to $50,000 total raise that we're projecting is we know that we have bills coming up. Um, and when they'll hit and we're planning accordingly. All right, that's all that I've got. Do we keep it under an hour? By like two minutes. Is that the right time? Cool. Questions? Comments? Thoughts? All of them are welcome. If you want to um, reach out to us later, please do so on Slack or Discord. Slack is better for me. Email is probably best. Um, the others can get lost in an avalanche of messages, particularly Discord. So if you do need to reach out to me, if you have concerns, um, questions, feedback, um, anything like that, please always know that you're welcome to email me or reach out to me on Slack or catch me up at the front desk. Um, just my email is ed for executive director. Um, at hackerdojo.com. Super easy to remember. Um, you can also reach me at eric.hess at hackerdojo.com. Um, so typically, if it's officially related to Hacker Dojo, please send it to the ED. Um, if you want to just talk about like the latest things in the cryptocurrency market and you want my feedback on that, um, I'm not the right person to give you feedback on that. But if you wanted my feedback, um, that eric.hess is more of a, as a member of the community, that's my uh, my email. But for anything officially related to Tacker Dojo, please use the ED one. Um, and that just keeps it in that record, um, you know, for like, if I get hit by a bus and something happens and a new ED has to come through and pick up the pieces and continue the conversation with you, we want them to have a record that they can access. Um, so we do have continuity um, in some of those systems. All right, the other thing I'm going to pull up. Awesome. Um, love it. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, who's supported us along the way. We really appreciate it. Um, if you want to uh, donate, it's right here. Um, if you navigate to this page, you can also share out those links. Um, we'll also share out the direct links um, on Slack and Discord. Um, again, we're really excited about this, um, but it's going to take a community to build this barn. 
Um, and we're going to need everyone pitching in, painting walls, moving tables, uh, setting up desks, um, lifting heavy equipment. Um, but I've gone through um, moves of spaces and growth of spaces like this a couple times in the last few years. Um, and it's always really exciting to see the community come together um, towards a shared common goal and see the excitement as uh, new spaces and new opportunities get unlocked. So I'm really excited to take that path with all of you. Um, if you have any questions, again, um, I'll also be around this evening um, at 6 o'clock. We'll um, probably play this again and have Q&A session afterwards.